えっ、ー、とそれではですね、時間になりましたので次のセッションに入らせていただきます。えっ、ー、と GPU を使った、えー、気象気候モデルのシミュレーションに関する、えー、状況を報告させていただきます。NVIDIA のスタンポージー。えっ、ー、と NVIDIA の中で、えー、と気象気候コードのを担当をしております。えっ、ー、とそれでは。Uh, Stan, please start your presentation. Thank you to the organizers for inviting me. I'm going to provide an overview of the progress being made in numerical weather prediction and climate models. I also encourage you to attend the next talk, which will give a very a detailed review of the NICAM model, which is based here in Japan. So, so mine is just an overview. And I think we'll have a lot more technical detail in the talk following this one. What I'll do, though, is first provide a review on the model trends and the motivation for use of GPUs. Then we'll review the GPU progress of、uh, three select models. And we'll complete this with a review on the next generation models and what they require of HPC and GPUs. For those of you who may not be familiar with the different segments and models that make up climate modeling and numerical weather prediction,、uh, those are listed here. There's roughly three segments within the domain that being、uh, climate modeling, which is a coupled interaction of ocean, atmosphere, land surface, and, and sea ice. And, and I list Atmosphere and ocean as the two most important components because they really make up the HPC、uh, bottlenecks. The HPC objective is to develop as much resolution and physics that's practical、uh, in balance with the cost of the simulation. Very different than numerical weather prediction, which we'll analyze next. And you can see here a list of some of the very important. Models around the world. And again, I mentioned NICAM will be presented in this session in the talk after mine. But these probably represent some of the most popular models used worldwide. Numerical weather prediction is what we're all familiar with in predicting and forecasting the weather. And it's based primarily on the use of atmospheric models exclusively. There's starting to be some ocean modeling introduced, but still mostly atmosphere. And the HPC objective is very different.、Uh, for forecasting, they have a fixed amount of time and they're trying to achieve as much resolution in physics, not based on cost, but based on a fixed amount of time. Here are some very popular operational numerical weather prediction models around the world. And then this represents. A list of next generation NWP models, which is very important to NVIDIA because these models are targeting hybrid architectures, including GPUs, and we'll hear more about that in the future. It's still a research topic, but should evolve later. This list moves up into the operational list. And then we have ocean circulation models.、Uh, these are Predicting shallow deep water behavior as well as waves, storm surge, et cetera, and can be used as standalone models, but also coupled, as you see here, for climate models. And there we have a list of those popular ones used around the world, and we'll investigate a couple of those here during the talk. So, about the trends currently and how that motivates the use of accelerators. Well, I think in every scientific domain you hear about the requirement for higher resolution. It, it, it's no different for this one, perhaps even more severe than others. But, but higher resolution with manageable compute and energy costs, very key. There was an important project called、uh, Athena, which I know that、uh, NICAM had participated in along with others. I think、uh, Rekin had been one of the, the、uh, organizers, where they looked at what resolution. Would be possible to get to much better scale. You can go and read about the project, but clearly getting to a one kilometer scale is one of the goals where 
they believe GPUs would be essential. There's also a need for increased use of ensembles and the number of ensembles members uh, to help manage the uncertainty, the uncertainty that comes from the variations in the data input that helps create the initial state that begins many of the models. This means that the number of jobs would go up at a minimum, a factor of 10, uh, could go up to hundreds, depending on how many ensemble members are interesting to a particular simulation. Then finally, another trend driving motivation for GPUs is, like in many domains, applying as fewer model approximations as possible um, and adding more features in the same process. Uh, chemistry is a new bottleneck that's emerging uh, that you'll start to hear more about. Uh, moving from a hydrostatic approximation to a non-hydrostatic approximation. These are all things that are going to drive the need for, for accelerators. And so the technology has been identified as a cost-effective way to approach these computational challenges. So I'm going to give three examples of that. One comes from NASA, some results that they have presented in their cloud-resolving model Geo6. I think you'll hear a little more about cloud resolving and the, the details of that in the next talk. Uh, but this work was presented, and they showed how they did a review on grid resolution, the number of CPUs core, cores needed to get to the one kilometer requirement for cloud resolution, and found that they would need about 10 million cores, which, of course, considered to be impractical and part of their motivation for moving to accelerators. A second example comes from ECMWF, who is one of the uh, top meteorological services in the world based in the UK. And they showed a similar review of requiring certain resolution, but also moving from hydrostatic to non-hydrostatic. Just that alone would drive up the number of CPU cores by a factor of 10. But then going to a resolution of 2.5 kilometers, similar to what NASA described at one kilometer, they would need something like 4 million cores based on their current platform. Uh, again, a very impractical approach, and the need for accelerators is, is a strong motivation. A final example comes from the uh, IPCC from 2013, where they're looking at uh, what had happened to the development and climate models over the years. And you can see everything starts with atmosphere, of course, in the mid-'70s, but as the progress of HPC has developed over years. The climate community has been able to add more component models to their climate modeling. And you're starting to see atmospheric chemistry uh, being introduced now. But again, as HPC expands, including the use now of accelerators, more capability, more features are possible. So that was kind of a review on the trends based on modeling practices and the direction models are going. Let's review quickly what's happening in hardware. If you look in Europe and USA, these are a list of organizations that represent the, the top operational NWP centers in the US and Europe. These two would represent the top atmospheric research organizations uh, based on uh, climate modeling. And you can see uh, the models here in the list, if you are familiar with this domain, these are some of the most important models in the world. Well, their previous or their current operational HPC was all based on either IBM Power or NEC SX9. And you can see just in this most recent transition, they practically all went x86. We talked to many of the center directors, and this motivation for x86 was to prepare for future architectures, which they believe to be accelerator-based. Now, at the time of these transitions, x86 was the only CPU available for GPUs. Today, we offer power with GPUs. So you know, the trend that will continue where some evaluation of a CPU architecture will be based on the use of accelerators. Okay. So how did this evolve? Uh, I started to manage this program for NVIDIA in 2010. And at that time in our focus, it was really only research for numerical weather prediction or climate, nothing operational. 
uh, because all the focus was CUDA implementations very early. This was to develop speed up demonstrations and convince management that these hardware devices were interesting to this technology. The current focus is now production research, but also now operational. And it's moved from CUDA to a focus on open ACC and libraries since the standard language of this domain is Fortran. Requires Fortran, programmability, portability, maintainability, all the things that you've heard about that OpenACC play a, a key role in. Uh, so NVIDIA has made some very strong investments in this domain as a result of the desire for operational needs. And we now contribute to 15 model projects. I'll show you the list here in a moment. And uh, we also invest in ongoing software development for Earth system modeling relevant requirements. And those have to do with uh, libraries, but also OpenACC. So the NVIDIA acquisition of PGI was very strategic for that requirement. Now, I'll mention also that we have to work very closely with our hardware vendors. Uh, Cray and IBM are who that, are, that I mention here based on some large collaborations, but we work with all the key vendors who provide hardware in this domain. So here's the list of those 15 model projects that I mentioned NVIDIA is invest, investing in. Um, You'll not see this distributed. We are working with these, these models. And you notice that in each one of these, they're all touched by OpenACC. And again, that's because the focus was demonstrations very early, but now has turned to production and operational. So OpenACC, open the progress of OpenACC is very important to the success of this program. And we've got various collaborations with organizations in, uh, in driving this. And, and this list continues to grow. 15 is, is where we are today. We continue to invest in others. And you'll see some examples. So for OpenACC, again, the progress is very important to the requirements of this domain. If you look at the members that make up the consortium of OpenACC, 11 members are non-vendors. There's about 24 total, I think, uh, about 13 are vendors and 11 are not. Each of these 11 non-vendors all have some project in earth system modeling or climate and weather prediction. And if you look here at the number of projects for OpenACC versus other domains like chemistry, physics, CFD, et cetera, there's two times the number of projects in any other scientific domain. So, so again, very critical because Fortran is so important. So NVIDIA hosted a session at the GTC in San Jose this March where we identified critical and common requests for some very key models around the world. Uh, in fact, I recognize a couple of people who contributed uh, to this list. But we had 10 models represented. And we had representatives from around the world who provided their view on what's most required from OpenACC and uh, what they would like to see in the feature list. Uh, following this session, uh, PGI shipped 14.4, if you've been following OpenACC. Uh, many of the requests that were made in these have been made available in 14.4. Some are coming in 14.7 this month. If you're interested in the results of this session and the study, uh, please contact me, and, and I'll be happy to provide them. So some very good results came out of this and gave more direction to the development of OpenACC. And I should mention that is both PGI and Cray who attended and listened to these requirements. So let's talk about some progress of select models. So I'm not going to go into detail on this list, but NVIDIA watches the development of various climate, weather, and ocean models both global and regional. And this list of 30 represents those that we consider very important to this domain. And the summary here is there's 30 models. 23 of the 30 have some GPU activity, 23 of 30. The ones in green are on a development path. And you'll see some release on GPUs. 
the ones in yellow are undergoing evaluation and should become green at some stage in their development. And then the ones in red are those which NVIDIA considers important, but they haven't started any development for some reason or another, and we're in discussions to help them get started uh, if they're interested. But, but all in all, I, we believe very good progress uh, for this particular domain. Now, what I'm going to do, though, is I showed this list earlier, is share with you three examples, uh, Wharf, Cosmo, and Nemo. And then in the next talk, you're going to hear about NICAM from the, uh, the colleague from uh, Rikin, Dr. Yashiro. So for Cosmo, there's a few references that I cite here. I won't go into detail, but you can go and view these yourselves for more detail. It was work presented at GTC and ICAS, if you remember with that workshop. And, and COSMO is a numerical weather prediction model based in Europe, used by uh, seven different weather agencies for operational NWP. They took an approach and an implementation that included an, an aggressive rewrite of their dynamics routines uh, in CUDA, and then using OpenACC for the physics and data assimilation. So their implementation goes with some data movement using OpenACC for physics, using CUDA based on a stencil library they developed that they call Stella. This is based on CUDA. And then interfacing with OpenACC for the assimilation. Uh, this allows them to run the entire model on a GPU. And the results that they report, and this is from the various conferences, show about a 3x speed up for the new develop model over the production code. But what's perhaps more interesting to them is that they're requiring 7x less energy. And this is based on the uh, CSCS, <coughs> the Swiss Supercomputing Center computer called PizDaint that uh, is number six on the top 500 from mid-year. And their architecture is based on a Cray XC30 hybrid. It's allowing them to reach a 3x speed up with 7x less energy. And this will be the first operational NWP that model that we're aware of uh, worldwide. And this should start sometime beginning of 2015. So let's look at WARF. WARF is really important around the world, probably the most widely used numerical prediction model in, in regional research. It's a local area model. It's used in 21 countries uh, in an operational mode and 153 total. In fact, there's some 23,000 users of this particular NWP model. <clears throat> because it's so important, NVIDIA had developed a specific strategy on WARF. <clears throat> there will be some CUDA development based on an organization in Wisconsin, USA who are doing a full CUDA port that they started in 2010 from funding based on NOAA and NASA. It's led by an NVIDIA CUDA fellow. And we plan to have a hybrid wharf uh, sometime this year with about 65% of the entire wharf model being accelerated on GPUs. In addition to that project, we have a, another project that's based purely on OpenACC. This is a collaboration with NCAR, who is the keeper of WARF, where we actually plan to have open ACC code in the distribution trunk of WARF. Uh, NOAA, Earth System Research Lab, and NOAA, NCEP are all involved in this collaboration. And you should be hearing more about this uh, sometime during late 2014. But we have a project on CUDA, a project on open ACC, we also have the flexibility to combine these uh, into a single model that could be available on the distribution site and something that NCAR is very interested in. So you'll hear more about that. But, but let me talk about the results from uh, this project, the first one on CUDA. There are some published results from this organization, SSEC, based the Space Science Engineering Center, where they have various WARF modules that they list. And there are scientific papers published for each of these. And they're showing the speed ups. Now, these speed ups are based on using one core with a single GPU. 
not quite a fair comparison since most people would run Wharf on many cores, or sorry, multiple cores on the CPU. But it's what they published. And NVIDIA went to validate these results for this model, WSM5, which shows 350X for one core and one GPU. And those results are shown here. Now, one thing you'll see is that the speed ups are much more reasonable, and it's because we're comparing against a full CPU, not just one core. This would be, uh, this would be a Sandy Bridge 16 core node, a Ivory Bridge 24 core node, Intel Phi, and the K40. These results are published. Uh, you can go and review the results, but just a summary is that the single K40 is 3.2x faster than the node of the Sandy Bridge two times versus the Ivory Bridge, and about 1.8x faster than the Xeon Phi. <coughs> so very pleased with these results, and we were able to demonstrate uh, and validate their development. So next is the Nemo Ocean model. Uh, Nemo is used around Europe and is now the ocean component model for five of seven climate models. So very important worldwide. Uh, also used in different agencies here in Europe, I'm sorry, here in Asia. Uh, currently a project representing 40 and users that represent a 400. So very important model. NVIDIA had made our own investment in this. <coughs> and I'm gonna show you results from two configurations, one based on an idealized uh, double gyra the other a Orca global high resolution configuration. And these results were all produced on the NVIDIA based, uh, GPU based cluster in Santa Clara that's comprised of Ivy Bridge with uh, K40. Now, again, NEMO is important to seven projects at the ENES, that's the European Network of Earth System Models. You can see it's used in uh, four of these and then the UK Met Office has announced that they'll replace uh, the UM ocean model with NEMO. So <clears throat> it practically dominates everything that's available today in Europe. So we did showed results where we looked at the gyra configuration on a full node without GPU and then used two cores to drive two GPUs. And that's the results you see here. So the blue bars represent this configuration <coughs> and the green bars this configuration. And you can see from two to eight nodes we're seeing really nice speed up uh, for uh, this idealized case. But what happens in the global case? This is the Orca uh, quarter degree. Uh, we didn't see as nice of a speed up, but still very, uh, very good speed up going out to a full 10 nodes. Again, the blue bar represents the full node configuration and the green bar, the use of two cores, each driving a single GPU. Again, uh, two Ivy Bridge with two K40. And you can see at 10 nodes, we're still at 1.7x uh, speed up for this global case, which has relevance to uh, user level simulations. But it's also interesting to note what happens at these two levels. You can see that the performance for four nodes that look like this, two cores and two GPUs on each of the four nodes, is roughly equivalent to full 10 node configuration, which I have shown here, meaning uh, two nodes plus eight, four plus eight equals 10, meaning the performance for this full configuration of 10 nodes can be matched by this configuration with uh, eight GPUs and this configuration with eight GPUs. The, the, the real key here is that it gives you flexibility in where you know, all of these cores that aren't being used <coughs> could be applied to another task, another job of some kind, another application, um, if there's an existing cluster. There's also the flexibility of having a more cost-effective new HPC purchase where it's not fully util, uh, populated by Z, G, CPUs, but including GPUs in order to reach the same level of performance. So, so a lot of flexibility in, in looking at the ways of configuring for different applications. So let's talk about next generation. There's uh, three things I wanted to point out about what's coming next that I think will influence a lot of development decisions. Uh, there's a lot of emphasis now on global 900 static dynamical cores with uh, an icosahedral spatial discretization, a new, a new trend that you'll see. 
There's a lot of different models. You'll hear more about this in the next talk, so I won't give detail uh, where you'll hear about NICAM, but it's a, a focus of the entire community at this time. There's also more investigations of iterative implicit and semi-implicit methods where historically they've been focused on explicit, but there's a lot more emphasis there. And NVIDIA is doing a lot of work around uh, uh, linear solvers and preconditioners that you heard about in the previous talk, and we're also looking at that for this community. And then there's a new DOE program called uh, ACME, if you're not familiar with the Trinity and Coral procurements that will be driving a lot of decisions based on just the sheer size of these particular uh, implementations. Uh, and you'll probably hear about ICOMEX in the next talk, which has to do with four different models driving the I icosahedral uh, based development. Again, NICAM from Japan is really key to that. Uh, three of four of those models are currently being developed on GPUs. The only one that's not at the moment is, is impasse. The other three are all based on GPUs. Uh, NVIDIA is now participating in the ECMWF scalability project. I mentioned IFS and how important that is. They're starting to look at future technologies. And this probably represents the most widely used global numerical, numerical prediction model in the world, and we're investing in that. They also have a strong relationship developing with the UK Met Office. They, in particular, are interested in the implicit iterative methods I mentioned. And we're introducing our new library toolkit, AMGX, to look at a variety of uh, implicit solvers, both in horizontal and vertical frameworks. And you can read about some of the work they're doing in a report they published uh, that requires the use of GPUs. And the uh, final topic, then, is about the new program from the USDOE called ACME. Uh, it's just getting started. But again, it's based on these two very large programs, which are uh, hundreds of millions of dollars that the DOE is going in a direction with. And this is to take the CESM model, developed by NCAR in the United States, and create a DOE version of that that's accelerated, running on Trinity and Coral. And GPUs will play a very key role in that, and you'll hear more about these announcements. So just to summarize, uh, we do see there's a lot of potential in the opportunities, and it comes from all the drivers I described, the need for higher resolution, more expensive physical physics parameterizations uh, for the same amount of turnaround, reduced energy consumption from, from IT procedures, but also some of those areas that were considered impractical that we talked about. GPUs can play a role there, moving to nine hydrostatic from hydrostatic for global models, looking at cloud resolving scale, uh, looking at radiation at more frequent time steps that you don't see today, and then areas of uh, expanding operational use of ensemble, which are not really widely used, and having more ensemble predictions and on a, a more uh, routine weather prediction level. So that concludes my talk. Uh, thank you for your attention, and I'll be happy to take any questions. Thank you, Stan. えっと、ご質問があれば、いくつかお受けしたいんですが、いかがでしょうか。ご質問のある方いらっしゃいますでしょうか。よろしいですかね。あの、この後引き続いてですね、えっと 4時55分より え、今何度も出てきましたが、日韓のコードについてえっと、お話いただきますので、え、ま、スタンもその後もおりますので、え、何かご質問ありましたら、え、またのちほどお願いできればと思います。で、えっと、ではありがとうございました。Thank you,